Hi there, I'm Max, and welcome to our part 2 of our 2x training video. This time, we're going to be focusing on the fixed scan. Let's jump right in. Go ahead and open your industrial pack, and grab the tripod, ball joint, scanner mount, mount attachment, power adapter, turntable data cable, and the turntable itself. Start by screwing the mount attachment into the scanner mount. Make sure the hole in the mount is threaded and aligned correctly. Screw the ball joint into the tripod. Prepare the mounting point on the ball joint by loosening the clamp as shown. Then slide the scanner mount into place. Then tighten the clamp. Now you can mount the scanner onto the tripod. Plug the data cable into the turntable as shown and the other end into your computer. Then plug in the power adapter and connect that to an outlet. Now we are ready to perform fixed scans both with and without the use of a turntable. Please note that while fixed scans do not require their own calibration, using the scanner still requires calibration as usual meaning calibration should be done whenever you move your workstation, install a color pack, or are experiencing issues or inaccuracies. When we start our fixed scan project, you'll notice that instead of the many options we usually get to play with, we only get to choose whether or not we're using texture. The rest of the options will be integrated with the rest of the UI. Speaking of the UI, the UI is almost the exact same as last time, except there's a few extra settings on the scan settings window. HDR, or High Dynamic Range, will be the setting we use for objects that have both dark and light areas. The Turntable setting will decide whether or not we're using a turntable with our fixed scan. The turntable will automatically rotate and scan all the way around the object. When we enable the turntable, we'll have a few more options to choose from. One of them is tracking. The turntable can use three types of tracking. Feature and markers, those that we're already familiar with and a new one that uses encoded markers on the turntable itself to align the object. There's also steps, which will determine how many scans will be executed in a full rotation of the turntable. Using many steps is useful for when you have a lot of places in the object that may require additional angles, like large crevices. But of course, this will take longer. The last option here will determine whether or not we use previous data to help with object alignment. As you can see in the camera window, we want to aim the crosshair at the center of our object and make sure that the scanner distance is appropriate, which is indicated with how sharp slash in focus the target projection is on the object. Remember that, just like other types of scanning, the light must also be adjusted appropriately. Also keep in mind, if you're using coded target tracking, the scanner should be able to view the turntable very clearly. It doesn't mean you have to see all of the markers on the turntable. However, this alignment mode is ideal for small objects because how easy it is to see them all. For this scan, we're starting with a turntable. Our subject is kind of tall, so we're going to rely on feature tracking as the angle we are using to capture the full object doesn't have a very good view of the coded markers on the turntable. Once we're ready, we'll go ahead and press the play button in the UI to start the scan. If your object fails to verify, or captures no data, then your light might need to be adjusted or the object failed to maintain tracking and you might want to try a different tracking method. After the scan is complete, we can choose whether or not we'd like to keep the data that we scanned. When you press the check mark, all the previous scanned data will be combined into one project group and the new data you just approved will be added to the project as a new group. The targets in the tabletop might be scanned in as data if you are not using coded target tracking. We'll go ahead and use data editing to quickly get rid of those. The software will also attempt to align the two scans together using an automatic feature alignment. Here as we continue to do scans, you will see that I will adjust the position of the object to get data from new angles. Notice that I have changed the alignment type to encoded marker tracking. This is because the scanner is now at an angle to which it can see the markers a lot better. Sometimes when you introduce new data from a different angle, it might fail to align them correctly. To fix this, click the align button and we'll do the alignment ourselves. 
Here we have three options for alignment, feature alignment, manual alignment, and marker alignment. Feature alignment will automatically align the two selected groups based on similar features. Sometimes it might not work very well. That's when we will typically use manual alignment. In order to do manual alignment, we will select three common points on both object groups. In order to select those points, we're going to need a hold down shift and left click on the object. Make sure that the number on the points pair up with their respective counterpart. The point pairs that you select should be as diverse and far apart on the object as you can realistically make them. Also, try to be as precise as you can. When you're done, go ahead and click apply, and if it looks good, hit next and then exit. The two groups are now merged. There is also marker alignment, which is the same except it uses only the markers found on the object itself. Now that we know how to align and edit data, we will keep scanning until we have completed the object. Generating point clouds and meshing is the same as we discussed in part 1. Now let's check out how we can do fixed scanning without a turntable. It's almost the same except we have to rotate it by hand. Fixed scanning is useful because you can scan objects that are too big to fit on the turntable. This object that we're using here could probably work fine on the turntable, but we'll just use it as an example. Go ahead and turn off the turntable option. You can disconnect your turntable if you wish. We will now capture the object one frame at a time. One tip I can give you for this process is to only make slight rotations in between shots. The idea is to make it so you can still see a portion of the object that has been previously scanned. This will make the auto alignment when you approve the new data more accurate and thus your scanning process a lot quicker. Other than that, it's largely the same. Okay, that's all I have for you guys this time. Thank you for watching our training video on the 2x fixed scan mode, and we'll see you next time.